Today we're taking on a Great Pyramid enigma. There are obviously many mysteries in the Great Pyramid, many enigmas, but this one is unique in many ways and not often looked at. So, what does this sign mean? Okay, this sign is uh, from ancient pictures of the pyramid. This one is from the uh, Edgar brothers, and it's in the descending passage. What does that sign mean? What is that mysterious symbol, this unexplained marking in the Great Pyramid's descending passage? Okay, so this marking appears right there. It's just below where the ascending passage breaks off from the descending passage. Okay, and you can see right in front of it in the descending passage is this granite block, this out-of-place granite block. Now, there are other places in the Great Pyramid where these out-of-place granite blocks are, and they seem to be put there systematically by the builder. This is part of the one of the in-your-face, in-plain-sight mysteries begging for interpretation. Okay, so the other granite blocks, this one that's pictured right here, is where the descending passage begins to go horizontal before it enters the subterranean chamber. And there are holes in this block which are significant, we can talk about later. Here I'm pointing to the granite plugs that block the ascending passage from actually being in ascent upward in the pyramid. Even though you would think that the ascending passage should be open, those granite blocks, which are called the plugs, are placed right there in the ascending passage. Then here's Morton Edgar uh, with a plumb bob taking a reading inside the Great Pyramid, and his head is hitting that the beginning of that granite plug. That's where the ascending passage should be. So his feet are standing on the descending passage as if he's walking down the descending passage, but then he he, he, if you wanted to go up the ascending passage, you can't because that granite plug is right there. Okay, here's another place that granite plugs are, and uh, no one that I know of in recent times has gone to this part of the pyramid. Uh, the director general, Ashraf, told me they don't let people go there. People probably aren't asking to go there because it's not something people are studying now, but this uh, right there, that granite block, which is pictured in this uh, elevation view of the Great Pyramid, uh, is is pointing to the well shaft. It's in the well shaft. And to look at a top view of it, uh, you can see where the well shaft goes down and the granite block is right there. So another out of place granite block in what is largely a limestone pyramid. Here's another granite block also with a hole in it. And this one appears in the pit of the subterranean chamber. Okay, so again, uh, this, there's a granite block that Judah, the worker of the uh, Edgar brothers, uh, is sitting on there. And so that's the, uh, one of these out-of-place granite blocks we're talking about. And uh, there's the, you can see a picture of it there where the rubble's been cleared away and Judah's no longer in the picture. You can see where that granite block is. And again, that's right there, just below where the ascending passage breaks off from the descending passage. Now let's look at the part of the pyramid where granite really is supposed to be, where it's not out of place, the king's chamber. So the, the uh, granite in the pyramid there in, in the dark color seems to symbolize divine truth or, or things of God. Just the way that gold in the tabernacle symbolizes divine things, you've got this granite because most of the pyramid is limestone. Now on the, the uh, what's called the granite leaf there is this boss this rainbow-like shape, one-inch uh, uh, projection, basically, that's there. And uh, so that you can see where it goes, that where the boss goes on the granite leaf, sort of the hanging piece of granite there. And uh, just below, directly below that on the floor, you can see in the pyramid where the limestone seen on the right turns into the granite, the red granite on the left. So that very distinct place takes place there. So it's as if the pyramid's saying the flesh, limestone, man, now approaches divinity. There's this transition from flesh to spirit, we could say, from earth to heaven, right there where the limestone becomes granite. So again, that boss is shaped like this. It defines the geometry of the Great Pyramid, according to Samuel LeBoy. Not only that, it defines the geometry of the Giza Plateau, according to Samuel Du Bois. That boss is like a sum total of the pyramid. Uh, Le Bois says it's as if 
this message says, this is the end of the construction of the Great Pyramid finished according to plan. That's what the boss represents. Now, here's a cross section of the Great Pyramid, the one we usually look at from the east side. That's where all that granite we just looked at is. It's in the, in the king's chamber there. And so, uh, but the, we've shown that there's granite in these other places. There's granite where the granite plugs are there. There's granite in the well shaft in the grotto. We saw that. There's granite down where the descending passage goes horizontal. There's granite down in the pit. There's granite in that special marking that we're looking at, which is in the descending passage. And there's actually a block right outside the entrance, a granite block. So something is being communicated here, that the granite, which is up high in the pyramid, which the king's chamber is constructed with, which seems to represent heaven and God and divine things, were given all kinds of intimations or hints of it down in these lower places that seem to relate to passages that men need to follow to get to their divine calling, to get to heaven, whatever. That seems to me what the symbolism is here. So here's a close-up of where the descending passage uh, goes toward the ascending passage there. And you can see where the granite block is that prevents an entrance up that ascending passage. Now down where that yellow arrow is, that's where this mysterious enigmatic symbol we're looking at is. It's a little bit past the point of the ascending passage breaking away from the descending passage. Now here I am touching, this is the other end of the granite plug. This is where it's inside, uh, the, the, near the ascending passage. So my right hand is touching that end. But the other end of that is the, the block, the square block that's on the top of this photograph. That's the other end that goes into the descending passage above where this enigmatic sign is, the Judah, the worker of the Edgar brothers is. So here, this seems to be related to what this revelation is. Okay, so you've got the Hemiunu template. If you followed uh, my, my account here, you know that we've talked about the 200 cubit horizontal slice of the Great Pyramid that's where the, northern, where the shafts from the King's Chamber come out, the northern and southern air shaft. That level is 200 cubits across, and it's defined by the Hemiunu template. This would be a top view now. So if you look at this uh, older view of the pyramid, but you can see the uh, passages inside. Now you're looking at a top view. The Hemiunu template is a, is a square. It's, it's a slice, a horizontal slice of the Great Pyramid. Okay, so if we rotate the Hemiunu template 45 degrees like that, so instead of being uh, 200 uh, cubits, it now becomes 284, 282 cubits, because that's what the, the distance is uh, of the diagonal of the Hemiunu template. And it creates a perpendicular, it's the end of that Hemiunu template on the diagonal is directly over where this enigmatic symbol is. Now this is interesting because look, look what's, what's created here. If you, if you go to that Hemiunu template, which is directly perpendicular to the mark, the air shaft of the Queen's Chamber goes directly to that point on both sides, showing that the Hemiunu template is defining not just that enigmatic mark we're looking at, but also it's related to the Queen's Chamber's air shafts, which are so, you know, so interesting. So, and so look at the shape that's created by connecting these important parts of the pyramid. It's exactly what looks like in the enigmatic symbol. You can see the circle there, which is a little bit outside of the Hemiunu template, and uh, it, it just is incredible. And so not only do you see that, that symbol, this enigmatic symbol, pictured in these lines, which we didn't invent. We simply followed the lead of, of these marks. It also uh, has the, the boss. The boss is also sort of pictured in that round and square combination there. And so if you uh, overlay them as they did here and just go back and forth with opacity, you can see that the, the, uh, the, the, the boss totally fits over those lines. It's, a, it's like a perfect match. And so uh, what we've got going here in the pyramid, this revelation, which we'll continue with uh, in, in future videos, uh, you've got this, the boss, uh, and looked at architecturally, so that's right there in the upper reaches of the pyramid. But then you also have down here uh, in the lower section of the pyramid, the descending passage just below the ascending passage, you've got this enigmatic symbol, and it creates with the Hemiunu template, this picture of the pyramid, which looks just like the symbol. 
So it seems that we're being told that Hemiyun who designed this, this is intended and there's something that's meant to be understood here. So stay with us as we continue to examine this most enigmatic symbol. Thanks for watching.